yo, what's going on? It's your boy Cool Ya P, aka Patrick Michael Strange. Today, I'm going to be talking with the director behind The Bargain. But before I get into that interview, check out the trailer right now for The Bargain. Here we go. It's a special night. The night before Christmas. Who wants a story? You ever have that feeling? Like something is watching you? I felt that feeling. I felt that feeling deep in my bones. I didn't believe in any of the scary stories. I honestly thought Mama was just trying to scare me. Then one night, when it was dark and cold, I woke up. I was so cold. I could see my breath. And I saw it, or should I say her, standing there by the door, cast in the shadows. She didn't need to say anything. I knew it was the Krampus. I wish it was a nightmare, a bad dream. Boom, there you go. That is the trailer for The Bargain. And as you see on the screen right now, I'm super excited to have the filmmaker Ricky Greenwood. Ricky, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you to you too. It's uh, Christmas Eve, so <laughs> it's a little yes. busy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you too. Making time. Definitely. And you as well. Um, so Christmas Eve, uh, I'm sure some people hope they'll get this in their stocking that they can check this out. Um, yeah. A little bit of Christmas oriented as well um, for we, we just came off of the trailer. Can you give us a little bit more background in regards to this Krampus uh, bargain story? <laughs> it's it's the, the background. If, if you mean about the story, like what, what, how we decide to do that, it was like we're talking about on set about stuff that we want to do. And like I was I was writing a Christmas movie for another studio and uh, they were like, I, I tried to pitch them the Krampus story and it's, oh no, it's too, it's too dark. It's too creepy. I don't think people, I don't think people will like that. So we end up doing a more funny comedy candy stuff. And, uh, but that idea was behind, behind me and be like, I want to do it. I want to do it. So I grabbed some people, some friend that I know of, and we decide to, to do that and, uh, by ourselves. So we create that little short film. that's about like 40 minutes. Uh, and uh, it's about a Krampus, the guy who um, he experienced the Krampus when he was younger, and he um, but a, he made a deal with him, saying that like if you if you don't eat me now, I just like uh, and leave me let me alive. You can have my kids later on. And now we are in in the future, and the kid he came the Krampus came back to his kid to get his kid, and he decided to make another deal with the Krampus and to see if he's, he can save the life of his kids and everybody. So Interesting. I, I've only recently become aware of the mythology of, of Krampus. I would say within the last five years. And so I find it fascinating and actually uh, have been, when I, when I see other people kind of adapt it and, and see these stories about it, I'm, 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 I'm taking it all in. Like it's, I find it so interesting because, you know, we grew up on Santa and Santa Claus, but you know, some of us that probably like a little bit of the darker element, the little bit of the horror element kind of <laughs> gravitate towards it. So uh, I, I'm really excited to check this out and, and love that you kind of brought this together as well. 
it was it was like it's very famous in Europe and like maybe like Scandinavian area. But uh, it became popular, I think it's 2014, when the Americans made a horror movie called The Krampus. And, and after that, like people were, American people were more aware of The Krampus and more type of story and, and stuff came. But, but you're not the only one because that, that m kind of monster was not very popular here in America until like recently. Which I'm shocked because... There's a lot of us that like horror and uh, all of these elements. So, uh, you know, I'm ready to digest it and take some more in. So uh, what was it like uh, getting uh, some of your friends involved with this? Uh, you explained a little bit about that, but uh, were, were they kind of fans of the concept? And uh, did, did they all kind of, you know, did they, uh, as you brought them in, want something to add to the mythology or, or just uh, in their involvement? Uh, everybody was like, was like, uh, um was like interesting because it's something different that it's not we don't normally do so like so like tommy was always willing to do any type of crazy story and and you have the same thing from like uh ashley lane you just like she's just, just in, incredible for her it was like it was hard because she was on the makeup chair for like i think like six eight hours oh yeah from her to a full crumpus and and it's very exhausting and people don't realize that because you have your full day of, of work that you have to do acting and performing, but you also have to spend time on the chair for six, eight hours. And after that, you also have to spend time two hours or three hours on the chair to remove everything. It's not just like, oh, you just wash it up. You have to unglue every piece by piece. It's very long to do. And we have we have we glue some hair on her hands and on her arms. So like and all of that, you have to wash it slowly and like we unglue everything. And it's it's it takes a lot of time, three, four people over her removing her because she wow. wanna go to bed. So like so her being able to go through all of that plus performing, and you know, like if she had to walk her back up and her arms like this, and she's like so she's moving in a different way, and it's very hard on her body. So, uh, but she was, it's something that she was willing to do and she uh, had really a lot of fun doing it. And, and I think you can tell everybody in, involved in the project, like they want to do it because they want to do something different. They yeah. want to do something like, um, you know, that you don't see a lot and, and, and having fun too. Like, because it's also those type of our movie or night shoot. They're not like, obviously we can do in during the day, but like, we shot in California. I want to have some snow. So like, so we need to black the window and have the fake snow machine coming out of it. And, and so like night is the best time to do it. So you don't have to uh, cover the window to hide the sun and stuff. So like, it was like, it was very long day, late night and a lot of effort on everybody, but like nobody complained. Everybody likes it. And, and we think we did a great job. I think it's scary. The, the, the response from the fans is great too. So, awesome! I can't wait to see it. And so let let let's uh, talk about the elephant in the room for those that are NRW watchers, because uh, we are now trying to add more type of content. This is an adult film, and uh, you know uh, this is the Nerds Rule the World, uh, you know channel. We're all about nerds, but then you know let let's be honest, and and that's what I'm trying to integrate now as I evolve into 2022 with my channel is. We're also grown folk here and, you know, this is how we got here. So, you know, we love the adult stuff, too. So uh, I, I love that shows that films like this essentially are kind of bridging that gap and kind of creating that kind of crossover, uh, you know, uh, genre, if you will. And, and so I thank you for being one of those uh, people bringing us this kind of content that can give us what we love in regards to the adult so stuff, as well as kind of, you know, mirroring, you know, just regular, you know, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's not regular, you know, because I think everything is, you know, all the same. You know, it's just bridging the gap that we don't normally see. And, and I love that. And I thank you for that. Yeah, it, it, thank you. I, I try to make something different. Listen, like the Internet is full of porn, just like you can find anything you want. But like we try to do some stuff that like is different and that people don't really see. And it's it's very you know, in porn, you, you're limited with like rules. So like, you cannot do everything you can. Is, and even all our porn, it's just like, you're very limited of what you're doing. We always try to push the boundary a little bit to, to like, uh, um, to see where we can go to appeal to more. Like my goal is to make like a movie, a movie. So like, I try to get closer to what Hollywood or any other people were doing, but obviously with, 
adult, you have some certain limit that you can cross because it just involves sex and love, like all that stuff. So, so they, so we have to be careful. But like, uh, we try to do it respectfully with taste and and and, and appeal to the fan. And I think if you're an horror, horror fan like me, you will like that. It's a lot of tension. You can see a lot of like angles or shot that we made or are like a, a homage to some horror stuff that we, we we like and we can see them in the movie. So um, I think it's it's a good thing. And we did couple this year with it. Um, Blue Moon Rising. It's a werewolf movie. So it's a girl transforming into a werewolf. She don't understand what's happening to her. So we have that. We have another movie called Last Kiss. That is an homage to Pet Cemetery. Oh, so, sweet. Yeah. So like we have that. So like she's like uh, basically his daughter gets sick, like the the uh, the sister in Pet Cemetery. So she had the same disease, same kind of makeup, and he's like, taken care of and like things doesn't go exactly the way the dad thinks it will go, but like uh so that one was fun too to do. And we did Under the Veil that is not like an uh our really a horror movie. It's more non exploitation. So um it's an, uh, so uh, it's, it's in the convent. So we have a lot of element of like uh, the girls, like we have some gory stuff in it, but like uh it's more drama, religious drama. I love that. Man, I love that. And uh, as you continue to build with what you're doing, Ricky, I'd love to have you back, uh, especially as we enter into this new year, 2022, because uh, that's what I'm trying to do with my channel and crossing over uh, with these genres yeah, that, you know, uh, I just recently was at Exotica, uh, D.C., like a week or two ago and just everybody that I met were the most authentic real people and just card carrying nerds as well. I loved it. Like we oh, were yeah. bonding off of nerddom. So, uh, yeah, have, like, it's like, it's, it's full of nerds. Like you have like a, one of my guy who do like who help with the set design is a huge Deadpool fan. He collect everything about Deadpool. And I have like a lot of people like I'm, I'm collecting comic book and, and stuff like, awesome. like crazy. we all, we all big nerds. Ax, Axel is doing all those superhero adult movies. Too. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, more, I'm, I, I just signed a contract with him for five movie, uh, Oh, sweet. In, Congrats. Uh, in next year. So like uh, we do, we'll bring this stuff. I will I will continue doing our movie next year. So like uh, now I have five to write. So we'll see what it will, what it will take me. But I have some uh, some stuff that I want to do. So we'll see. Uh, you probably see more of that in 20, uh, 2022. So. Awesome. I can't wait. And congratulations, man. And as uh, that comes to the, the fold to the people, please come through so I can give you some love and light to celebrate that. Um, yeah. But I also want to just to shine a light on with this particular film uh, that you're benefiting the Sidewalk Project, which I think yeah. is absolutely amazing. Can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah. So basically all the money that we raise on uh, art movies, like if, if, when you rent the movie, uh, like all the money that normally like they have money go come back to the creator. For those things so i give all the money who came back to me to that sidewalk project to help uh, homeless people in different places i think they have san francisco la and vegas i think and many other places but that's the three that i know so they help uh homeless people give them like some some clean socks clean underwear they also like help them with mel men mental issue uh see if you're a drug they will give you clean needles uh, they will help sex worker by giving them condoms and help if they need it. They need it. So, like, I think it's very important to to especially now with the last couple of years, we had a lot of more homeless people, people who had like necessarily wants to be there, but like they lost their house, they lost everything, and they end up in the streets. So, helping them, it's a good thing. And I I wish that like we can raise money to help them. Um, I will try to do more of that during the year too. That was the first attempt that we tried to do. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll see. I, it's good to help people. It's not just on Christmas during the year and like finding a, a good organization who help them. It's, it's nice. Exactly. I love that. And, and uh, that's part of the reason why I wanted to reach out to you and, and just have a, this conversation beyond my love for Krampus, beyond my love for, for the work that you're doing. And uh, when you're doing good, you know, I think this was a, a great way to be also my last interview for the year. So so yeah. I thank you for uh, being what the, the saint that you are with, with what you're doing and with your work. Uh, that's yeah. what I intend to do with myself as well with, with the work I do to just show love and light. 
And, and so, Ricky, thank you. Thanks again. How can uh, my fans become now your fans by giving you a follow, a subscribe? Uh, can I give some of your socials out there? Uh, you can give my social, but I am very bad at it. I don't <laughs> know them. Uh, I want to. Or just say. how can they check out your work? Yeah, they, they can Google Ricky Greenwood for sure. Uh, and I need to learn that like, my people will be mad at me because I don't know my, my Twitter. But like, uh, let me do a second. Profile. Okay. Uh, it's Ricky Greenwood uh, at uh, X. So for on the Twitter. So there you we can, go. Ricky Greenwood X on Twitter. So you can find me there. You will find my new trailer. I post trailer. I post some picture of the work that I do. Um, so like I, I'm, I'm doing the next in the next few days, uh, I will I will post a BTS of the Krampus, the makeup, and like them behind awesome. the scene. So like you will see how it was on set and uh, how, how much fun we had doing this. So I'm sure we'll post that in a couple of days. So awesome, I love it. And how can they find uh, the bargain? Uh, where can they see that the, online the, as well? The bargain they can find it on artmovie.com, uh, movies with an S at dot com and um. You, you, they have a banner there, or they just you can just go on the um, uh, search search um, uh, like search place, and they will just tap the bargain, and they will find it. And bargain will also, if you're a, a member of Adult Time, uh, the bargain is also will be also on Adult Time on December 25th, so you will be able to uh, watch the movie there for free. Uh, adult Time. L plus give uh, money to the foundation. So like uh, in, in exchange, I give them like the uh, the movie so so they can put it on their platform. So they were very generous to help also the, the sidewalk project. So it was fun to uh, participate with a big studio like that. That's awesome. And that's amazing. Ricky, it's a pleasure to meet you virtually. Um, hopefully we can connect uh, as you continue to rise with all the work that you're doing in 2022. Uh, all the best luck to you uh, with that. Uh, for me, it's your boy Kuyapi at the legend Kuyapi on Twitter, TikTok, and IG. Of course, here at the NRW and at New Release Wednesday, where nerds rule the world. Thank you for being a card carrying nerd with me, Ricky, and, and no sharing problem. everything about the bargain, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go, y'all. Ricky Greenwood, Kuya P, Nerds Rule the World. We're out of here. Oh, <laughs> my